more than one of you out there is an expert in pain. Aching, disabling, intense, neck, shoulder, back, or maybe knee pain. And you have tried massage, acupuncture, pram therapy, and even drugs. But sometimes it seems not to completely disappear. And it could become chronic. But is pain itself the issue? The short and shocking answer is no. If we can change the way we consider pain, we can decrease it. And we can increase the quality of our lives. I will show you that it's not so difficult. True story. A careless worker nailed his foot and immediately started screaming in agony. Once he arrived at the hospital, the doctors weren't able to remove the shoe because the man was such in pain that no one could even touch his foot. So they decided to scan him. And this is what they found, a nail in the foot. All right, what's interesting about this story? Uh, once the doctors were able to remove the shoe, cutting it away, they saw the nail had passed precisely in between the toes without any tissue damage. <laughs> this story can help you understand that pain is not directly correlated to tissue or structural damage. If we compare visual system and pain system, we can see they are quite similar. <coughs> Peripheral receptors, neurons, conduct the stimulus to the brain. The brain elaborates the information, making sense of these electrical signals, leading to conscious perception. Sight is a very precise way of perceiving information from the environment. Have a look at your hand. How many details could you appreciate? Yet, it is very easy to trick the eye. Let's have a look to this short video. I want you to consider that sometimes your brain is tricking you into thinking you are in pain. But pain is only the conscious expression of how your brain perceives something dangerous or not. And that's the reason why sometimes you can feel pain without any tissue damage. In a study published in 2015 in the American Journal of Neuroradiology, 3,110 asymptomatic subjects underwent an MRI scan of their back. What researchers found is very interesting. They found a lot of structural alteration, even in very young subjects, and all these alterations are irrelevant for the production of pain. For example, if you are 50 years old, uh, it's more plausible that you have a disc bulge than not, even if you have no pain. Many times I see patients suffering from chronic pain. This is the case of a 19 year old girl that underwent an MRI scan of her back because it started hurting. What they found is a herniated disc and uh, even if uh, her symptoms were not relevant for that kind of problem, she had been told that she was in danger, that she needed immediate care to prevent the worsening of her disc. She was really scared. I explained to her that you can have a disc bulge without no pain and that her symptoms were justified by the complex biology of pain. After three sessions, I asked her to climb up on a 40 centimeter box. And this is what she answered me. You're crazy. I can't raise my leg so high because of my pain. I was starting to doubt of my treatment because of the poor result. 
But then something happened. While I was explaining to her once again how wrong ideas could maintain her symptoms, she noticed her shoelace was loose. And without thinking, she lifted up her foot on the 40 centimeter box to fasten her string. I continued talking, but my mind was already thinking, what the heck is happening? I stopped talking. She put down her foot. We stare at each other for maybe 10 seconds. And then she asked me, so what's the next exercise? You did it. And she realized it only then. She started crying. After three more sessions, she was back to her normal life. I want you to consider that pain has changed your way of thinking, your way of acting, and the quality of your life. There are many studies that demonstrate that linking pain intensity to structural damage is wrong. In a study, asymptomatic knees of NCAA basketball athletes were scanned at the beginning and at the end of the season. What they found is different kind of alteration and different kind of severity. The only thing they had in common was the complete absence of pain. What's the most relevant thing is a shift in mind. What we call in Italian cambio di mentalità regarding pain. And that is the most important thing I'm asking you today. To better understand it, scientists and researchers have developed a biopsychosocial model that underlines the importance of taking into account not only the biophysical aspects of pain, but also the psychosocial aspects that are so relevant as well in the production and in the maintenance of pain. Pain is very complex and very hard to understand in general population and even for clinicians. So what I suggest you is always seek out for a health professionals. But the good news is that everyone can get better and treatment are supported by strong scientific evidence. For example, in the prevention and the treatment of many musculoskeletal conditions, walking has reported to be more useful than, than many passive treatments, such as massage or painkilling drugs. So stay active, avoid passive treatment and over medication. Movement can replace any drug. No drug can replace movement. In a study, 121 patients suffering from moderately disabling pain underwent just only one session of pain physiology education. What they found is that there was a strong relationship between cognitive change and pain intensity or physical activity, even when there was no opportunity to be physical active, such as you right now. The author of this study stated this, anything that change your brain's evaluation of danger will change your pain. So a shift in mind is the first step to a shift toward a better quality of life. I hope I've changed your mind. Thank you.